so what we're going to look at is the jurisdiction, the power of the Magistrates Court and the jurisdiction power of the Crown Court, as well as criminal appeals. So quite a bit to get through in, in this video. You could be asked a question about the jurisdiction of the courts. You could be asked a question about appeals. OK, so first of all, the jurisdiction, the power of the Magistrates Court. So there are about 160 Magistrates Courts across England and Wales. There used to be double this number, over 300. But since 2010 and austerity, there have been a lot of government cuts and um, the criminal justice system suffered. So cases are heard by three magistrates. They are called lay people. That means they are unpaid and they are unqualified. Um, sometimes you can have two magistrates with a qualified district judge, but generally it's three three unqualified people. So what do magistrates do? Well, first of all, they hear all summary cases. Um, they hear some triable either way cases, the ones that don't go to the Crown Court. They also commit indictable offences to the Crown Court. So they send um, indictable offences such as murder to the Crown Court. They deal with the first hearings. So um, you'll often see in the press that the defendants appearing in front of the magistrates court um, and they will deal with issues like bail. Should the defendant be bailed or should they be remanded in custody? Um, they also deal with arrest warrants. So when um, the defendant hasn't turned up to court or hasn't um, answered their, their bail, you know, maybe they were meant to report to the police and they haven't done so. Um, they hear about 1.5 million cases a year. So that's a lot of cases. They can also... Um, do things like listen to the youth court, which is 10 to 17 year olds. Um, and the other important thing they do is they can extend police questioning time. So um, police can hold you for 24 hours. Superintendent can extend that to 36. And then the magistrates have the power to extend questioning time um, to 96 hours. So what did the Crown Court do? Well, the Crown Court, there are 84 of them in England and Wales. So all major cities have one and actually Quite a few major cities will have more than one. So London definitely has more than one. And they hear all indictable offences. So all those murders, rapes and manslaughter cases, robbery cases. They will also hear some tribal either way offences. So remember when the defendant pleads not guilty, they um, can elect a trial by jury. Um, when the, the court case happens, there, if the defendant pleads not guilty, there's a trial by jury. Twelve members of the jury decide the verdict. Is it guilty or not guilty? If the defendant pleads guilty to an indictable offence, then the, um, there will be a pre-sentence report prepared. And the judge will um, summarise the, the facts of the case and um, the barristers will say their bit. So the prosecution will have a bit of a say as to what they think the sentence should be. And the defence will put in any mitigation and then the judge will sentence. So when there is going back to when there's a trial by jury, the judge controls the courtroom. It's their courtroom. So they direct the jury on legal matters. They sum up the case for the jury. Um, if anyone's causing any trouble, they can be sent down to the cells. So um, single judge is, is dealing with matters in the Crown Court. So what happens if you've been sentenced or convicted and you don't agree with your um, your verdict or your sentence? Well, what we need to talk about are criminal appeals from the magistrates court and criminal appeals from the Crown Court. So this is where your court hierarchy comes into play. So you've got to think magistrates court and then you've got the Crown Court. You've got the Queen's Bench Division of the High Court and you've got the Supreme Court. So think about your court, your court hierarchy. First of all, the defendant can appeal against their sentence. So we're in the magistrate's court. We know it can only be six months. There's no need to get leave permission to appeal. And the sentence, only the defendant can actually appeal against the sentence. It's heard by a judge and two magistrates and in the Crown Court. And the Crown Court can confirm the sentence so they can agree. So it stands or they can increase it or they can decrease it. But they can only increase it to the magistrate's maximum. So if you've got four months, they could only increase it to six months, basically. So that's appealing against the sentence. The defendant can also plead against the uh, appeal against the conviction if they pleaded not guilty and they were found guilty. So they will hear judge and two magistrates will rehear the case and any extra evidence. And they can either uphold, i.e. say, yes, you're still guilty, or they can quash the conviction. So you would be free to go. You're no longer a criminal. 
There's also something called a case stated appeal. So both the prosecution and defence can use this. This is where you don't go to the Crown Court. You go straight to the Queen's Bench Division of the High Court. So you like leap a stage. And what you're arguing is that a mistake has been made in law. Very few of these cases are heard, only 100 each year. And what the Queen's Bench Division can do, they can confirm or vary the decision um, or they can reverse it. They can send it back to the magistrates to implement the new decision or listen to the case again. So case stated appeal, prosecution and the defence, and it has to be on an error in the law. Next thing to talk about are appeals from the Crown Court. So let's look at the defendant first of all. What can the defendant appeal against? Well, number one, defendant needs permission to appeal. They need leave to appeal. They can appeal against their sentence and or their conviction. Now, the Court of Appeal um, will consider whether leave is granted. So you're going from the Crown Court to the Court of Appeal and the Court of Appeal uses their powers under the Criminal Appeal Act 1995 to do this. So an appeal is allowed if a conviction is unsafe. So if there's new evidence or the jury have been nobbled, then the Court of Appeal can listen to this evidence. They can quash the conviction. They can dismiss the appeal. In other words, uphold it. So you're still guilty. Or they can actually order a retrial, which is quite expensive. Um, in terms of the sentence, you, the defendant, are appealing, saying your sentence is too long. Well, the Court of Appeal can decrease your sentence or they can keep it the same. They can't increase your sentence when you appeal against your sentence. So what happens if the prosecution are not happy with the decision? Well, they have limited rights to appeal um, from the Crown Court about the acquittal. So when the defendant is not guilty and the prosecution want to say you are guilty um, or if they think the sentence is too lenient. Now, prosecution can appeal against an acquittal if the jury have been nobbled, so bribed or threatened. Great word, nobbled. Um, if there's new or compelling evidence and it's in the public interest to have a retrial, prosecution can appeal. Um, and that applies to serious offences only. And that's what the Criminal Justice Act 2003 said. Now, what if the prosecution don't like the sentence, if they think it's too lenient? There are lots of examples in the press, so please have a Google. Um, there's one recently I saw, I can't remember the name, but um, a young woman was thrown out of the back of a van. Her ex-boyfriend kidnapped her, threw her out of the back of the van, paralysed her. Her injuries were so bad, she was paralysed. And I think he got five years in prison, which does not seem long enough. So the prosecution are currently appealing that. So have, have a Google. It's interesting stuff. Um, they do need leave. So they need permission. And what happens is they're saying it's an unduly lenient sentence. So the sentence is too light. It's too short. Um, and the prosecution will refer this case to the attorney general. So the attorney general is the um, government's senior legal advisor and the attorney general will review the case and they can indeed increase the sentence. Now, if you've got to the Court of Appeal and you're still not happy with the decision, sometimes you are allowed to further appeal to the Supreme Court. It has to be a matter of general public importance and you do need leave to appeal. So in reality, there are very few criminal appeals to the Supreme Court each year. OK, hope that helps a bit. Quite a long video. Sorry, but just keep pausing it.